five sewing tools you probably haven't seen before. Even if you have been sewing for multiple years, I think that a few of these tools will surprise you. We will start with a tool that I had the most fun trying out recently, and it's the pearl setting machine. So one thing I have to tell you is I love pearls, but sewing pearls by hand, not so much. So when I got recommended on Amazon this pearl setting machine, I was immediately very interested and excited. So the idea how to use it is very simple. Here at the bottom you install the small nail and here at the, at the top you put in a pearl. Then you simply put in the fabric, fold the handle gently and the pearl is installed. I have to be honest, I had my reservations about this tool because it was priced about 20 euros including 300 pearls in five different sizes. But to my very pleasant surprise the tool actually works and I tested it by installing multiple pearls in different sizes on my blouse. So this is the before and this is how my blouse looks now with pearls installed. So on one side of the garment we see pearls and on the inside of the garment we see those small small nails. Now to use this machine you have to use pearls which are suitable for setting using a setting machine. So the difference between pearls that are set in using a machine and pearls that are uh, installed using sewing method is that the sewn in pearls have the hole for the middle so that you can slip the needle through it while the setting pearls don't have that and I actually prefer it that way because then you don't have those visible holes. I was able to find pearls that are dedicated for setting with a machine uh, in our local sewing supply store for like 50 pearls for the price of 1.5 euros so I do think that it's actually quite a good deal. Another big plus for me is that you can install multiple pearls very very quickly. I love adding pearls to my designs and this tool will make it so much faster and quicker. I had in mind a design for a dress which would require like almost a thousand pearls so I was putting it off for a very long time because I did not want to install that many pearls by hand but using this machine I think it will take me like literally less than one evening to do. And I also have two nieces and I have a very cute design for a Christmas outfit and I will mix embroidery and a few pearls uh, to create a very festive look. If you're a pearl fan like me I will include the link to this tool in the description box. Moving on to the second tool and it's check owner. I am probably pronouncing it wrong so I will <laughs> write the name of this tool here on the screen. So in one of my previous videos I mentioned that I have a hard time finding high quality chalk. Chalk is my preferred method for marking fabrics. In that video a lot of people have recommended various items for marking and a few mentioned this particular tool. I got very interested in these tools and so I did a little bit of research and and this particular tool is also recommended by Susan Kalie, which is a very well-known couture expert. So I decided to get this tool and check for myself if it's as good as everyone is saying. And it is very good. So at the bottom we have a very very small tiny wheel which is impossible to even see with the naked eye. But if I rotate it I think you're able to hear that the wheel is making that little sound. So the tiny tiny wheel dispenses chalk and makes a very fine chalk line. So what I like about this particular tool after, after testing it on different fabrics is that it doesn't drag the fabric which happens sometimes with chalk especially if the chalk is very hard. And also because of that teeny tiny wheel it makes a very very fine line. And at the top of the tool we have a little brush so if you make a line you don't want it anymore you can just brush it out. 
Also, the shape and the form of the tool itself is very comfortable because it looks a lot like a standard chalk, which I'm very used to working with. This tool isn't very cheap, mainly because it's very hard to find, especially here in Europe, and I was only able to find it in one store on Etsy in UK, so I had to pay extra for shipping. But this item, in my opinion, really is worth the money. Also, what I want to mention is it's supposed to last like a very long time because it dispenses very minimal amount of chalk and when it runs out of the chalk you can buy a refill of chalk and refill the item. This tool is one of the great examples of what I love about social media because I'm not only able to share my experience here but I'm also able to learn from you from your experience to uh, see your recommendations and learn a lot myself. So thank you so much who recommended this tool and I appreciate every single comment that I get. I learned so much from your experience. So thank you for sharing it in the comments. Third item I'll show you today is the measuring wheel. So I initially was not planning on buying this tool, but it was available on the same Etsy store where I bought the check owner. So because I was already paying a lot for shipping fees, I decided to buy this tool as well. So on one side of the wheel, we have the metric measurements centimeters and millimeters and on another side we have the one fourth scale measurements. The edge of the wheel has these small rigs so it makes for better traction when you're rolling it on piece of paper or fabric. To use this tool is very simple. You set it on the zero and then slowly rotate it and measure whatever you want to measure. So I tested this tool and I find that it's very accurate especially if you want to measure very difficult curves. Of course this tool is not a must-have. An alternative method of using a measuring tape also works fine. However, with the measuring tape, sometimes you can get a little bit inaccurate results, but like millimeter or two difference, while well, this one will be more precise and more accurate. If you enjoy making your own patterns, if you struggle measuring curves, I think that this is a good item to consider having. Fourth tool I think you haven't probably seen is the tiny weaving loom. So this tool was again offered to me on Amazon. It had so many different options from different sellers and a lot of reviews. So it was only 10 euros. So I decided I would give it a try and I would let you know if I like it or not in case you were wondering whether to buy this tool or not. So this weaving loom is used for visual mending, which is in itself a form of art. You slip this disc under your, a hole you want to repair, you secure it with the band which is included in the kit, then you put it on top the loom, secure with another band which is also included in the kit and then you thread these hooks. So to simply put how to use it, you thread it and you push the needle horizontally, thread it and then once it's done you just rotate hooks to the other side. It lifts a second row of uh, threads, you push it again and you kind of create a weave. So a few things I didn't really like about this particular tool. So one thing I didn't really like about this tool is that the instructions it came with were very, very unclear. But lucky for me, there are quite a lot of tutorials on YouTube that are in depth and show how to use this tool. A second thing I didn't really like is that even though it is secured with two rubber bands, a few times it kind of just jumped off. But I think it also needs just a little bit of practice to use it and maybe it wouldn't happen if I had more practice with this tool. And the third thing I didn't really like about this tool is that the space right here is quite limiting. So you are very limited on the size of weave that you are able to do. Back when I was a child, my mom used to mend our clothes. She would take an empty glass, put a cloth with a hole over that glass. She would either secure it with a rubber band or no, I don't remember it now. And she would 
simply do by hand and with a big darning needle exactly the same thing and it worked quite well as I remember and it didn't require this extra tool. In my opinion visual mending is a very interesting form of art so if you want to try your hand at it this is not a bad tool to have and it again costs like 10 euros so it's not very expensive and if you're interested in trying it out i will link it in the description box and this last fifth tool is my prize possession right now it's this binding foot so the big big benefit of this particular foot is that you're able to take a bias cut strap put it right here through the binding part of the presser foot once the fabric is fed through here then you put your main fabric in the middle and just sew it with a straight stitch and this presser foot forms the bias binding and attaches it to the fabric using just one stitch if you pair this foot with elastic thread you are able to sew elastic binding again with just one stitch if you need to attach a lot of binding if you're making swimwear if you're making baby clothes or maybe you just need to attach a lot of binding let's say for your business this is really good foot to have now it has a few minuses one minus is that it's quite expensive so if i recall well i paid 15 euros for this foot while i usually pay about 5 euros for presser feet for my industrial sewing machine so it is three times the price the second thing is that it does work only on one size of strap so if you want to attach a more narrow or wider binding you will have to buy a second foot and the third thing i didn't really like is that it took about 10 minutes for me to install this foot because you have to switch the needle plate you have to switch the feed dogs you have to switch the presser foot itself and on industrial sewing machine every single task takes quite a bit of time so if you're making like a very short uh, bias binding it's probably not worth all that effort but again if you're working with a lot of bias binding i think it will be worth your money and time so this particular foot is for industrial sewing machines but i did see that a few domestic sewing machines uh, do have similar foot as well however i have not tested yet those uh, presser feet so I cannot recommend but if you have tested a similar foot for domestic sewing machine I would appreciate if you would leave a comment with your recommendation for a specific domestic presser foot so that other viewers can learn about this foot so here are all unusual sewing items I wanted to show you today and if you have a very unusual sewing item I would love to hear it so please leave a comment what unusual sewing item you love using. Thank you for watching today and I will see you next time. Bye!